Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. October 1, 2020, the end of diversity training edition. First up, and we'll start with that story, as the Trump administration is trying to bar all federal agencies and indeed anyone who does business with the federal government from putting on diversity training, which it calls un-American and divisive. It's led to widening confusion and cancellations across the government because uh, the Trump administration says it will prosecute anyone in the government who allows such training. Obviously, uh, Trump announced at the debate uh, how much of a racist he is because of his failure to uh, even criticize white supremacists. But So this is really not anything new. But the problem for these agencies, it's a violation of law, and it's a violation of Title VII in the private sector. So um, the uh, actions by the Trump administration, particularly Office of uh, uh, OMB, Management and budget are clearly illegal. So just trying to uh, drive up more white terror as he goes down into the West. Next up, from the Wall Street Journal Risk and Compliance Journal, Volkswagen tries to change the workplace culture that fuel the emissions scandal. <clears throat> the company is betting that a reform compliance culture and expanded whistleblower program will help it clear a critical U.S. regulatory milestone later this month and will also help to prevent another scandal and go a long way towards restoring its reputation. Hard to believe its reputation could ever be restored. Nevertheless, the company has spent the past several years trying to resolve issues related to its emissions testing scandal, where it rigged 11 million of its diesel vehicles worldwide with software to dodge government emissions tests. The company says its years-long multi Prong transformation and ongoing sur- <coughs> surveillance are essential, and has spent some thirty-two billion uh, plus thirty-seven billion in fines and penalties to make the change. So, uh, hopefully, uh, Volkswagen will come out of this, but we'll have to see. Uh, next up, a very disturbing story from the New York Times that a <coughs> nurse worked in a, at the Neurobehavioral Hospital in Crown Point, Indiana, was fired for whistleblowing about the nursing homes and the uh, nursing homes' illegal dumping of unprofitable patients as emergency rooms in psychiatric hospitals. Her employment was terminated because, uh, as the hospital said, she blew the whistle, and that uh, by (coughs) uh, whistleblowing around the illegal actions, that violated company policy. Well, you can't fire people for, one, refusing to engage in a legal act, or two, whistleblowing about a legal act. So very, very uh, bad situation from this hospital, but it really shows the links, uh, the criminal links that hospitals will go to hide their illegal activities, claiming that it violates company policy to actually tell the truth. And finally, to Sarah Croft, who was inducted, um, inducted into the American College of Trial Lawyers, A big congratulation and hats off to you. I can't think of anyone who deserves this honor more. Great trial lawyer, a great blogger, and congratulations, Sarah. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.